In this video, we're going to be looking at sequences further, studying some examples and looking at some terminology and applications of sequences. So here I've got several different um, examples of sequences with a few different kinds of notation. Um, we know again that a sequence is an ordered list of numbers. Um, for my first sequence example here, I have the list 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. Um, the fact that I've got these curly braces here, this is part of the sequence notation. I could also, instead of listing um, all of the uh, particular terms in this sequence, I could write a formula for um, the terms of my sequence by saying that for this particular sequence, the nth term, a n, is equal to 1 plus 3 n, and that um, this corresponds to the terms in my sequence here. If I let n start at 0, so if I have um, n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., and a n equals 1 plus 3 n, then that will generate this list of 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, etc. Okay. So in terms of some terminology here, we would call n the index for my particular um, sequence here, and this index n is starting at 0. Another way that I could um, write this same sequence here would be to put that formula 1 plus 3 n in curly braces and then put my starting um, index on the outside. So I could say this is from n equals 0 up to infinity. Okay, to indicate that that list goes on and on and on. Um, let's look at a few more examples here. Here I have a sequence um, where I have the formula 1 over 2 to the n in the curly braces. It says that that sequence goes from n equals 1 to infinity. So if I wanted to write out the terms in the list form, this would be 1 half, comma, 1 fourth, comma, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, etc. Okay. Um, I could also have written this sequence as a n equals 1 over 2 to the n, where n, my index here, starts at 1, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. Um, over here I have um, an example of an alternating sequence. So here my nth term is given by um, negative 1 raised to the nth power where n starts at 1. So if I start plugging in my different values here for n equals 1, the first term of the sequence is going to be negative 1. We plug in 2 for n, then I have negative 1 squared. So that's going to be positive 1. And so this particular sequence here is going to be alternating between negative 1 and 1. Um, the fact that negative 1 to the n will cause the sign to alternate back and forth um, is something that will show up in a lot of different problems where um, we have something that has that kind of behavior or where we want to write a sequence that has that sort of alternating behavior. We incorporate that negative 1 to the n power. Um, the example that I have over here is an example where you have um, the first term of your sequence given, and then you have the n plus 1th term defined in terms of the nth term. So this is called a recursive kind of definition. So what this means here is that a1 is equal to 10, and then a2 here is equal to 3a1 minus 12, which in this case would be 3 times 10, let's say 1 is 10, minus 12, 30 minus 12, so that would be 18 for the next term in this particular sequence. A3 would then be 3 times 18 minus 12, or 42. A4 would be 3 times 42 minus 12, or 114. So this is another way that we might um, have a sequence defined for us, would be in terms of what happens to the previous term each time. Okay? So that just gives an idea of several different um, types of sequence examples. Um, let me just write down one other um, term here. So each number in the sequence is called a term. Okay, so let's look at some more examples here to deal with our sequences. So we had said earlier that with our sequences, we're going to be interested in um, 
convergence, questions of convergence. We have this infinite list, so we're going to be interested in what's happening as we as we approach infinity or as we go really far out in our sequence. So we just have a reminder again of the formal definition of a sequence. Sequence is this ordered list of numbers that has this general form um, of a1, comma a2, comma a3, etc. And then you can have a formula for the nth term. You can have your sequence generated by what's called a recurrence relation, where you're defining the next term um, in terms of the previous term. Okay, so you have the first term given, and then you have a formula for the nth plus oneth term based on the nth term. Or we can have an explicit formula where we just have a formula for the nth term of our sequence. Um, we'll see examples of both of these, but primarily um, as we, we go through this chapter, we're going to see more explicit formulas for our sequences. So let's look at the idea of sequence convergence. We're not getting into the full technical definition quite yet, but we want to think about the um, idea for what we're going to mean by sequence convergence. So when we're talking about a limit of a sequence, we say that if the terms of our sequence um, a n approach some unique number l as n increases, so this is saying that is if the terms can be made as close to l as we want by taking n sufficiently large. Um, that's still somewhat technical here. This is just saying if we go far enough out in the sequence, what value are we getting closer to? Um, if we're getting closer and closer to some particular value far enough out in the sequence, then we can say the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to l. Okay, if we're going, getting closer and closer to some particular value, that limit exists. And then we use the terminology that our sequence converges to L. And if we don't approach a particular number, then we would say that the sequence diverges. So here's what it might look like for our sequence to converge. So we've got examples of converging. So I could have a situation where the terms of my sequence increase and they get closer and closer to some limit value L. It could be the case that my terms sort of increase and then decrease a little bit and then get closer and closer to some value L. It could be that my terms sort of increase and then decrease and then increase again, but that those oscillations get a little bit smaller over time and get closer and closer to some value L. These are not all the possible things that can happen, but this just gives you an idea of a couple different ways that we might have our sequence converge. Thinking about some examples of ways in which our sequence might diverge, we could have things like, well, the sequence just increases forever and ever, um, goes off to infinity. You could have a situation where your terms are just getting smaller, so they're decreasing and not approaching. Um, some one particular value. You can also have a sequence that's diverging because it's oscillating back and forth and those oscillations aren't getting any um, smaller. It's just bouncing around. So that would be another example of the sequence not converging. Okay, so we have sort of an idea of when a sequence um, should be converging to something, what kinds of situation would cause a sequence to be diverging. So let's look at a couple of examples. So in this first example here, I have the nth term of a sequence given by 1 minus 10 to the negative n. So we know that this could also be written as 1 minus 1 over 10 to the n. And this is for n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. So the index is starting at 1. So we're asked to write the first couple of terms of the sequence and then try to um, look at the pattern that's happening and think about whether the sequence is converging and what it might be converging to. So here, if I plug in um, 1 for n, let me see, instead of writing this as a list, I'm going to write out um, each term in this way. So if I plug in 1, I have 1 minus 1 over 10. So that's going to be 9 over 10 is the first term of that sequence. For a2, we're going to plug in 2. We have 1 minus 1 over 10 squared. So that's going to be 1 minus 1 over 100, or 99 over 100. I plug in 3. I have 1 minus 1 over 10 cubed. This is 999 over 1,000. And if I plug in 
n equals 4, I've got 1 over 10 to the 4th, or now I've got 9,999 over 10,000. Okay, so we can see that what's happening here is that our values are getting closer and closer to 1. So we would conjecture here that this is converging to 1. Okay, as we're um, getting smaller and smaller n's, that 1 over 10 to the n is getting smaller and smaller, so it looks like this sequence would be converging to 1. Okay, so what about this other sequence here? I've got a n equals 3 plus cosine of pi n, where my index here starts at 1, so let's look at the first couple of values. So for a1, I'm going to have 3 plus cosine of pi. We know that um, cosine of pi is negative 1, so this first term here is going to be 2, 3 minus 1. For a2, I'm going to have 3 plus cosine of 2 pi. We know that cosine of 2 pi would be 1, so that value would be 4 then. When I now plug in 3, I've got 3 plus cosine of 3 pi. We know that cosine of 3 pi is going to be negative 1, so I'm back to 3 minus 1, which is going to be 2. So we see we're getting a different kind of pattern here. Um, when I plug in 4, I'm going to have this 3 plus cosine of 4 pi, so that'll be 3 plus 1, or 4. So we can see that this sequence here has terms that are oscillating, so we'd say that this sequence diverges. Okay, so now we've seen a couple of examples of how we're going to be thinking about sequence convergence. Um, we want to just look at one application on one of the uses of sequences, and we'll later get into some more details, um, technical details of determining sequence convergence. So here we have this example where we're told that Jack took a 200 milligram dose of a painkiller at midnight, and every hour 5% of the drug is washed out of his bloodstream. So we're um, using sequences here to represent um, the amount of the drug that's going to be in Jack's blood n hours after the drug was taken, where the initial amount is 200 milligrams. Um, so we're going to try to write out the sequence here and look at um, what this drug amount here as a sequence um, is actually converging to. So we're being asked to write out the first couple of terms, find a formula for the nth term, find a recurrence relation that generates the sequence, and then estimate the limit of the sequence. So let's see what our sequence is going to look like here. So we have dn is representing the amount of the drug in this person Jack's blood at, uh, let's see, n hours after the drug was taken. So the initial amount is 200 milligrams, because there's a 200 um, milligram dose of the painkiller. We know that one hour after it was taken, um, there should be 5% less of the drug than there was to begin with, since we're told every hour 5% of the drug is washed out of the system. So that means that after one hour, we have 200 minus 5% of 200. Okay, or in other words, we have 95% of the initial amount. Okay, so we Think about just factoring the 200 there, I have 200 times 0.95. Another hour later, okay, we have the amount at one hour here, minus 5% of that amount, so minus 0.05 times d1. Or in other words, we have 95% of the previous amount here, so I'm going to have 200 times 0.95 squared, okay. After the third hour, we know we're going to um, decrease 5% of the remaining drug from the bloodstream, so we're going to have 200 times 0.95 cubed, 95% then of the previous amount. If we have, we're um, losing 5%, so we only have 95% of what's there. Okay, so we go to the fourth hour here, we're going to have 200 times 0.95 to the fourth power. So by writing it like this, we can see that our formula for the amount of the drug in the blood after n hours is going to be 200 times 0.95 to the, whoops, not to the fifth, but to the nth power. Okay.
So this is our explicit formula here that we were asked for. Okay. In terms of a recursive formula, a recurrence relation here, Okay. Well, we know that the initial amount in the bloodstream was 200, and we know that our n plus 1th amount, the amount at the n plus 1th hour, is always 95% Excuse me, of what was there at the nth hour. Okay, so that's our, our recurrence relation information. Okay, so we've written out a couple of terms. We have an explicit formula here. We've found a recurrence relation. Now we want to think about what the limit of this sequence is. Okay, so thinking about the fact that each time we're taking 95% of the previous amount, I'm always taking a fraction that's less than one of the previous amount. So thinking about it in that way, our amount should be constantly decreasing. So we're always taking 95% of what we had. It's always going to be less than 100% of the previous amount. So the amount in the bloodstream is going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're going to sort of reason out here that the limit of the sequence should be 0. Should be that dn is converging to 0. Okay, and we'll be looking at more of the technical details um, associated with, with sequences and determining sequence convergence um, as we get into section 10.2.